Hi, uh, Pablo Kuntz here again. I'm the president of Unique Japan. We're here at the Okinawa Sword Show. And uh, what I'm holding here are a lot of todoksho, a lot of registration papers for the numbers of swords that we have here today. You see, every Japanese sword has to have its own registration paper. It's kind of like its passport. And that's what this is right here, this white piece of paper. And uh, when somebody purchases a sword from us, uh, we have to uh, give this, uh, this little piece of white paper, usually it's laminated, uh, to the owner. Now, the sword, wherever it goes, wherever it travels, uh, it has to have this, this registration card. Basically saying that it's been registered with the police and with the local governments to say that yes, they are aware that this sword exists and, uh, and that the owner that does carry the sword, as long as they have this paper, uh, is carrying a, a legal, legal piece of art and also a legal weapon. Okay. Now, a lot of people ask me when we, when they leave Japan, if they were to purchase a sword from Unique Japan, what paperwork is needed. Basically, what we have to do is take this this white todoksho, and uh, we have to deregister it, essentially giving it some kind of ability to leave the country, so exportation papers. And we take care of all that work for you. So if you are uh, interested in buying a sword and you're, you're concerned whether uh, you know, you're not going to be around or uh, you're not able to take care of it and you prefer that we send it over, we can certainly do that. And, uh, the team at Unique Japan is quite strong. Um, this is Rie Yamashita, she's my, my operations secretary. Uh, this is Mr. Nadazaki, he's from uh, Kansho An, he, as a sword dealer, has had a lot of experience, over 15 years of experience in dealing with Japanese swords. And he is partly responsible for gathering the number of swords that we have here uh, today. It wasn't any small feat to get all these swords at one time. We don't, per se, own every single sword. Oftentimes we just go and we, we borrow the swords from trusted uh, sword dealers. And, uh, and that they say, yeah, sure, we're willing to, uh, to have you uh, take these swords and, and introduce it to uh, different, uh, different populace. And, and what happens, happens. So every sword show that we do have, uh, there's always a fresh new round of, of swords. So it's very, very exciting. Now, uh, in terms of certification, one thing is registration with a sword. That's very important and that's legal and all swords have that. And basically just having the todoksho says that it is a genuine Japanese sword. But there's something else that you can have. And not all swords have this, but um, many swords do. And this is called a kantesho. This is a, basically a certificate from uh, the the Society for the Preservation of Japanese Art Swords. It's like a very long, it's a very long name. Um, but what they do is they take either a photograph or some of the older swords have uh, what they call oshigata. It's almost like a stencil of the actual sword itself. But this is the tang. This is that the the handle uh, of the sword. Again, and in this case, this is my my personal sword. It says Echizen uh, from Echizen, the area here, and then. I think it's Hitachi Daijo Norisada, Fujiwara so Norisada, Narisada. And this is the, the name that's engraved here. Now, what this certificate says is, is that yes, this sword uh, does exist, and, and what is on this, on this blade itself is correct. Because even back three or four hundred years ago, there was forgery as well. And also, it tells you the, the era that, that the, uh, the sword. Uh, came from, if the date is written on the, on the sword itself. Um, it's something nice to have, it's very secure and it gives you uh, one a sense of um, sort of confidence that you, you have a, a legitimate sword and of course uh, we try to gather this paperwork for you. Now in some cases some swords don't have this certification but we can do that. You can buy a sword from us and then we can apply for certification. Not all swords get certified uh, but most, most swords do. It's just a matter of time. It takes about three months, sometimes half a year, to receive one of these uh, Kante shows. But it's uh, something worth having. Certainly I wanted to have it. So, sending swords to the United States, for example, uh, 
one thing I have to be very clear is that I can't, uh, at Unique Japan, send any swords to a U.S. military base, for, uh, for example. Uh, basically, in the cases where we do have a sword show uh, on a base or outside of a base with military customers, we generally send it stateside for you. Now, as in England, when you're sending swords over to these countries, they treat it as, uh, because these are antiques, I mean, as you know, these are like 200, 300, 400 years old, they treat them as antiques, and uh, there really isn't any problem with bringing in a sword to the United States. We send it quite regularly over overseas. Uh, the only issue is that each municipality has its own rules, and it's not advisable and probably not even legal to go parading with a sword on your back in the United States of America. So you keep it in your home. It's not something that you just throw around like a, like a baseball bat. So obviously uh, it's, a, it's a prized and uh, possession, it's something of, of great, uh, well, of, of great artistic value, but also one of great moral value as well. And you have to treat it with respect. So you keep it in your house, you keep it safe, you keep it away from your, your children in, in, a, in a location that you feel comfortable with. Now, you do receive a stand with every purchase at Unique Japan, uh, also a nice silk bag uh, when, you, when you buy a sword. I, I keep mine in a silk bag. I have two young children, so I don't want uh, them to come, obviously, close to it as well. And I take it out at night um, when they've gone to bed and, and look at the sword and, and sort of admire its beauty. And, and because I've been living in Japan for about 15 years, uh, I find the, the Japanese sword somehow uh, very symbolic of my time. And somehow it, Culturally, the sword makes me, uh, I don't know, look back on the time that I've been here and, and, and also have a greater appreciation for the Japanese culture as a whole, which is the reason why I started in Japan to, in the first place. And that was really to bridge that gap between these great handcrafted products that Japan is so famous for. But yet, people overseas don't know about them. And I want to try and get that message across that people say, yeah, you know, when I buy something from Unique Japan, or I just even just learn something from Unique Japan, at least that cross-cultural information is uh, being shared, and that to me makes it all all worthwhile.